not missing breakfast, it's missing lunch. And then it's like four o'clock and you're like, why do I feel like I want to pass out? Right, right. And then you kind of end up with that sumo diet, right? Where you, you don't eat all day, then you just have way too much dinner. And then you look in the mirror going, hey, why don't my pants fit? Hey, this is Buzz Bishop, and you're listening to the Don't Change Much podcast. If you've ever wanted to eat better, feel better, or just get a straight answer on the subject of food, well, this is the episode for you. We're honored to welcome back Caitlin Boudreau, a registered dietitian from Telus Health My Care, and introduce our newest guest, Toby Hargrave. Toby's a film and TV actor, an award-winning veteran of the comedy stand-up circuit, and he's also a national champion with the Canadian Men's Health Foundation. In this episode, we'll explore some of the most popular healthy eating topics for men, hear what motivates and challenges Toby, and learn how a dietitian connects food with well-being. Stick around for a taste of what you can start doing to eat healthier. Toby, we're talking food. We are. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. You know what? I'm hungry. Uh, I'm hungry. Yeah, I know already, that. right? And now I'm Time hungry. Out. Um, you know, you're the primary cook at home. I love when, when busy dads are the ones who look after everybody. You had a uh, restaurant industry experience. So you got a couple yeah. of young kids. What's a typical meal at, at your place? What's oh, a typical meal? You know, uh, oh boy, I tell you what, breakfast is uh, pretty straightforward for the most part. You know, cereal, uh, something to get the kids out the door. Uh, I, I tend not to eat breakfast. Um, I'm not an intermittent faster. I, I don't know enough about nutrition to make that decision, but uh, I tend to eat later in the day for my first time. Uh, lunch is a complete, who knows? It, it's always, you know, the kids are at school. Uh, we're running around doing our things. But one of the things that I'm, I love in our family is every dinner is together and we sit at a table and uh, we have a family meal. And that meal is typically... You know, and this is something that I'm actually, you know, happy with. We always talk about making changes, and I think that's important to make those changes. But it's also important, I think, to celebrate some of the things that we do well. And that's one of the things that I'm really happy with in our house. So our food really comes from whole yes. so whole foods. We we start with potatoes and meats and fish and, and vegetables. And then I, I, I put those through my magic process and, you know, <laughs> outspits a, hopefully a delicious dinner. And, and that's really important to me. We don't use a lot of processed foods in our house. We don't, uh, you know, there's some canned goods like tomatoes and beans or something like that. But, you know, I, I think if there's one problem that I have in our house right now is that we, we over, I overcompensate. So growing up as a kid, we didn't have a lot in our house. Right? We had a pretty empty fridge a lot of the time. And I seem to have uh, gone overboard. That will never be a problem again. I have the world's largest fridge, apparently. We have a huge, uh, you know, place to keep all our dried goods. So that's been really good. I, I think one of the problems we have is snacking. Yeah. But uh, a typical meal in our house, generally speaking, I would say um, is whole foods uh, cooked from scratch. Not a lot of um, processed items generally. That's a great way to do it. And everybody sitting down together, you know, kind of slows things mm. down and it's not a rush and back out the door. Uh, so when you were growing up, you were, you were fit into bodybuilding, you were canoeing across polar caps or whatever. Yeah. However you describe what you were doing, climbing mountains. Mm -hmm. How, how, how was uh, meals, how are meals different with a family than from when you were doing that? Oh, oh well, I, I think, fundamentally different. I mean, in some of the outdoor, you know, orienteering and things that we did, you know, when we canoed up, uh, canoed past the Arctic Circle, this is my old life back when I was more svelte back then, um, you know, through the BC interior, a lot of hiking and dog sledding and these sorts of things, you're, you're limited there. Um, it really comes down to nutrition, like lunch with a, a cup of granola and a chunk of cheddar cheese and breakfast was uh, porridge, you know, done over the fire and dinner was you know, normally pasta. Um, so you lose that flexibility. And when you're weightlifting training, I was quite young. I was getting into um, bodybuilding in my late teens, you know, uh, 17, 16, 17, 18. And I was in a really, really, really bad accident that took me out of that. So at that point in time, nutrition didn't play a big role. I was just that 18 year old who wanted to lift sure. heavy things, right? You're just like, whatever. Um and and you just want to keep eating. You're eating enough at that age where you're fueling the muscle, like the muscle growth, and you recover instantly from you know everything. Important, you know. And now I, 
I just hurt myself sleeping. I don't know. It's I'm falling apart. I'm falling apart. <laughs> Caitlin is in with us as well. She's our registered dietitian coming up. We're going to do a little bit of a, of a session with her. But Caitlin, what's your, what's your first reaction to hearing how uh, Toby likes to do a family meal? I love it. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, I really try to do it with my own family and my own. I've got two little boys. So yeah, I think it's it's critical. It really is not even so much for like what we're eating, but just kind of sharing that meal together. And um, kids learn a lot about, you know, what to eat and how to eat from watching us. So I think it's a really valuable experience. And yeah, I recognize with a lot of my clients, they don't always have the ability to do it, you know, every single night and that's okay. But I think whenever you can do it, you know, even if it's like a, a quick little meal together or, um, you know, a breakfast or something, I think there's always value in it. I want to talk a bit about um, doctor's visits and and uh, stuff like that, Caitlin. I, when I go and get my annual checkup, there's a lot of questions on family history, high blood pressure, cholesterol, the blood work measures this, which means I'm often reacting to what's been going on instead of getting ahead of it. How can diet help us be proactive to answering these awkward questions from our doctor? Yeah, I think, Buzz, it's always easy to, you know, deal with these things kind of before they occur, right? And so that's where I like that focus on being proactive, you know, not waiting until maybe your cholesterol numbers are through the roof or your blood sugar measures are not great. Uh, it's a lot easier to tackle those things, you know, before they actually happen. So I think the best way we can look at it is trying to get started, you know, now with a healthier diet. Um, and it doesn't have to be a total overhaul. That's the beauty of it. It can just be some tweaks here and there. Um, but, you know, trying to find a nice, easy way to sneak some veggies into your day um, or maybe for you, Toby, trying to get that breakfast in, in the morning. Um, that's another big one of mine. And so, uh, yeah, just little changes here and there can have a big impact on, you know, then you can feel a little more confident going to the doctor and uh, trusting that those numbers are going to be where they're supposed to be. How, how are your doctor's visits, Toby? You know, just... <laughs> Generally, not not too bad. I mean, it was funny the reactive sort of thing. I remember I went. This was a few years ago now, maybe six seven years ago, and uh, I, I went to see my doctor just for a general checkup. Nothing yeah. really was pointing out. And uh, a couple of days earlier, I, I always run hot. I, I run at a million degrees. I'm always warm, and my mm -hmm. wife is always cold. And uh, you know, and and she kind of we go back and forth on it. I always tell her like, look, you can put on a shirt or a sweater, and I can only get so naked. So make your choices. And um, <laughs> but she's a nurse, so she's very smart. She's a very smart woman. And and so she said one day she looked at me and said, you know what? Maybe you're the problem. And so I went to my doctor and I said, uh, hey, you know, my wife's pretty smart, and uh, I'm here anyway. So I'm always hot. What's up with that? And he said, uh, yeah, 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 you have a fast metabolism. And I remember saying, um, sorry, like like this is a fast metabolism. And he said, yeah, yeah. I said, uh, what would happen if I had a slow metabolism? And without missing a beat, he just said, wouldn't be good. And I, re I remember that day, like like the humor of the moment, but also that kind of little, little, not dig, but that little, it was weird. And for, for the funny moment that it was, I left thinking, huh, like I am lucky. I, I know I have a pretty fast metabolism. So what, what's going on? Why do I look the way I look? And that comes from a lot of different things. And nutrition is such a huge one. And, you know, I take that away from, from bodybuilding when I was really working out a lot and, um, you know, back and forth with it and the knowledge that I've gained a little bit over time. And I think a lot of people still look at fitness and health from a get out there and do a run or get out there and, you know, get your exercise in, which don't get me wrong, is so important. But the nutritional aspect of it if you don't have the fuel going in, you'll never have the output or the results that you want. You're just not in a healthy cycle. And, you know, nutrition, I think, kind of what you were kind of mentioning there, you know, breakfast. The, the problem that I find is I don't forget about – it's not missing breakfast. It's missing lunch. And then it's like 4 o'clock, and you're like, why do I feel like I want to pass out? Right. Right. And then you kind of end up with that sumo diet, right, where you, you don't eat all day then you just have way too much dinner. And then you look in the mirror going, Hey, why don't my pants fit? <laughs> and so it kind of catches up. Yeah. 
this is probably a good time to to go in and do this session. I think we've laid a, laid a little bit of groundwork here, Caitlin. And you're a registered dietitian with Telus Health My Care. I know what a mental health therapist or physical trainer does. I I don't really know what a dietitian does. So maybe you can walk Toby and I through what a session with a dietitian might might look like. Yeah, I'd love to. And Buzz, I think most folks are in the same category where they're just like, I've never done this before. I don't know exactly what you do. So yeah, yeah so let's get started. Um, I guess Buzz, Toby, uh, maybe we'll start with you, Buzz. Yeah. What sort of nutrition kind of goals or or even concerns do you currently have that you're working on? Well, I mean, it is all stuff that stems from appointments with the doctor, right? Um, when I went in the fall, I had high blood pressure. Um, I'm probably about 50 pounds overweight. And while um, I can motivate myself to to do exercise, um, you know, uh, my wife brings bad things into the house. See, look like how I shift the blame. She says, don't touch it. It's kids food. And I'm like, yeah, but it's there. So, <laughs> so yeah, like this afternoon, I might, I might've had a, a cinnamon bun for dessert after my, my lovely uh, bowl of lentils. But so <laughs> that happens on occasion. So that's some, some more guidance and, and barriers on the bowling alley sort of thing would be good. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think what you described is, is pretty common, like kind of having that knowledge there, but just struggling a little bit with, you know, how to apply some of these uh, nutrition principles and practice. Um, well, Toby, I mean, I could shift it over to you just to get a sense mm -hmm. of um, often, you know, I asked Buzz kind of what, what he's struggling with or what he's working on. But I think the mm -hmm. next, next step in our conversation is typically like, can you take me through a typical day of eating for you? Um, and sort of walk mm -hmm. me through that. Um, yeah. For me, I, you know, I would say um, my, my, my day starts with a coffee or, or, or two. I, I'm not a huge coffee drinker, but as I'm getting older, I notice the coffee I do drink is far more important and mandatory. Um, I typically don't start eating or maybe have anything to eat until noon or one in the afternoon. Um, and that will typically be... You know what? Is there a whole wide range? It, my, my first meal almost always comes from the fridge. It's either leftovers from the night before, or uh, maybe eggs and and uh, some some hash browns or, or something like that that I'll make. Um, and um, and then I'll be fine throughout the evening or sorry through the afternoon and into the evening. Then I generally start making dinner about three. We have dinner about five thirty or six, and it's a big gathering around the table. And that's always just a big meal. Um, it, you know, maybe one of the things we're, we're introducing uh, vegetarian days, maybe once a week or so, because we have a typical, that typical, uh, maybe North American, right? That guys, you know, there's meat, oops, and then we got some veggies around it. A really good selection of veggies. I mean, we do a lot of greens. So beans, let's see, what do we have? Beans, Brussels sprouts. We love Brussels sprouts. We love uh, asparagus. I try to keep a lot of greens in there. Because uh, I have this illusion that it's better for me somehow, and that offsets the, uh, the twelve ounces of steak I'm about to eat, and and I've even shrunk that down. So, um, and then really where things start to fall apart is in the evening. So when the kids go down for bed, you know I'm not a sweets guy. This is all you know meat and potatoes, and um, I'm the savory fella. And so that's kind of where I start. You know, you sit down to decompress. I'll have some nuts and bolts in a bag. These are my treats. These are, I love these nuts and bolts. And then you're halfway through the bag of nuts and bolts and you look over and realize, what's an empty bag of nuts and bolts? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I've, I've already forgotten. I ate one of them. Oh. So yeah. trying to pay attention to that and, and balancing that, but also trying to decompress mm -hmm. and um, not self-medicate, but uh, how do you, it, it's a comfort. Yeah, kind of it's reward. Comfort. Like, Yeah. Definitely. I think, yeah, yeah, that sounds like very, very typical. I shouldn't say typical, but uh, yeah. One thing I heard you say, Toby, is that the mm -hmm. evening is the problem. I can't tell you mm -hmm. how many times I've heard that one before. Uh, but I mm -hmm. also noticed that you said that, you know, breakfast may or may not happen. Um, and a really common one with men that I hear is lunch. Like, oh, I missed lunch or, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I'm just too busy to eat lunch. 
Um, mm-hmm. And so just wondering if you're noticing any trends that you have of like how frequently you're eating, um, because it sounded to me mm. like you might have a, a pretty big gap there between your breakfast and your dinner time um, or sort of skipping meals. And then that sumo eating that you yeah, described right. where it's like, you know, you're voracious and can't stop eating. Um, right. Yeah. So just wondering if you notice that. So that, that time frame, I do, you know, I think one of the challenges that we have is for us and our, we live up on the Sunshine Coast, just outside of Seashelt. And so we don't have a lot of the variety of places to go to eat that you might have in Vancouver. And so when you're, you know, when you're racing around, you're, you're running around, taking care of whatever you have to do throughout the day, you know, boy, oh boy, up there, there's not a lot of really I mean, maybe there aren't a lot of really healthy places anyway to stop. But, you know, there's a McDonald's or an A&W or a Tim Hortons or a Starbucks. And I really try to stay away from those places a lot. It's never been that kind of food that I enjoy. But it can be really hard to find a snack. And it's really hard to prepare. You know, you go out, you get carried away. And before you know it, it's 3 o'clock and the day just seems to get away from you. And, you know, and then dinner, you know, you have that that, that dinner. But it's a snacking. You know, I'm pretty responsible at dinner, even... If I don't eat, uh, but boy, oh boy, I tell you that that snacking is what gets me. I think. Yeah, I think the snacking in the evening is a really tough one, and really, what I kind of try to illustrate for clients too is if we don't eat enough earlier in the day, so we kind of skip mm-hmm. the breakfast because we're busy, or we're you know head down in our work for lunch, so we don't take that break and eat. Um, it all mm-hmm. tends to catch up with us at some point. Um, so we could look at maybe restructuring, you know, your day a little bit, not your work day, obviously you can't control that necessarily, yeah. but looking mm-hmm. at trying to get some more protein in spread out throughout the day, um, to help kind of mm-hmm. fuel you so that you're not, uh, sort of reacting to, oh my gosh, I'm hungry all of a sudden. And, you know, I only have McDonald's in front of me. Um, right. but yeah, Buzz, I don't know if you notice a similar thing at all with, sometimes being a little bit too busy during the day and not taking that time to, you know, eat something and then having it catch up with you often, I will say in the evening is a common time. Yeah. There was a time in my life where my wife and I did uh, an LA weight loss program. I don't think they're around anymore, but the thing that it really taught me and I, whenever I'm trying to focus on my nutrition, I bring it back is small meals throughout the day. And one of those things where you, you find yourself eating so much and yet you're losing weight. And so it would be five or six meals a day that we would have. Um, so in my cupboard for my snacking, I have uh, mixed nut, mixed unsalted nuts. And so I'll try and have like when I, when I feel like I want a snack, it's, you know, almonds, pistachios, cashews, and walnuts are all in there. And I just try and have tiny handful <laughs> like maybe a dozen, um, but that or, um, or carrots and snap peas. So trying to reach for those sorts of things instead of chips <laughs> or, or yeah. something. because like what you were saying with like, with, with protein as, as a snack that we should have, because most of us think of, of bars or, or chips mm-hmm. or, or something like that. It's got the sugar feel, but that's not really good for us. What, what is a, what does a protein snack look like? Yeah, well, just to go back a tiny bit too, I've, I think I've heard both of you say like, oh, I try not to snack, but I do as if it's a bad thing. Um, but snacking is wonderful. It's kind of a nice, bri- you know, not always and depending on what we eat, but it's a really nice bridge between meals, especially if we're trying to go, you know, six, eight hours between meals um, and expect to feel good and expect to feel energized. So to answer your question, Buzz, I think protein, that protein is really important at a snack because it is our fuel. So it helps us focus. It helps us concentrate and stay motivated. Um, It helps us to feel a bit more energized as well. Um, And I'm talking things like, yeah, the nuts that you just mentioned, a quarter of a cup is a really good serving size. Um, So that's like a small handful. Um, Cheese, cheese and crackers, that's one of my favorites. Pretty simple, but it works pretty well. So cheese, crackers, and, you know, a sliced apple. Um, It could be a little bit of Greek yogurt. Uh, I really like Greek yogurt because it's a lot higher in protein. Looks like Toby is a fan as well. That's my dessert. I like to have the, the the lime Greek yogurt in the fridge is my dessert. 
Awesome. That's a great one because you are getting, you know, that sweetness, but then it's that protein you'll really notice that's going to carry you a lot longer than just having a regular yogurt. Well, that's interesting. I've, I've started eating yogurt. I've just, I've been infatuated with yogurt. I just love it. And where I get into trouble though, becomes maybe what you've just already touched on, you know, that quarter cup of nuts. Mm. It, it's um, one of those things where it's, yeah, a quarter cup is great. Uh, <laughs> half a bag is maybe not so great. Um, you know, yogurt, I, I love yogurt, but a, I, I can eat a 650 mil organic, you know, Greek yogurt pretty quick. Um, and so maybe just kind of, you know, minimize that is, is really what I have to focus on. Yeah. I mean, that's a thing that comes up often, right? Portion sizes, how to manage that. Um, I mean, there's two big ones, I would say. So Toby, one thing I would observe with yourself, maybe next time you like go for that big tub of yogurt is, hey, when's the last time I ate? Um, because I would suspect if you had eaten maybe three or four hours before, I would imagine that you may not feel that need to eat, you know, quite so much of that yogurt. But if it's now all of a sudden it's been, yeah, six hours, eight hours and you haven't eaten, um, it's really hard to fight that, you know, that hunger is a pretty strong driver for how much you're going to eat. So paying attention to the timing of your eating is a big one. Um, and then the other part is maybe scooping it out, right? Because we all typically, if we have a big, you know, bowl of something in front of us or a giant plate of food, I think many of us have kind of been grow, you know, grown up to believe that, okay, finish everything on your plate, you know, eat that whole serving of whatever. Um, so scooping, you know, a reasonable amount out, you could measure it a couple times to even be able to eyeball what is a quarter cup of nuts, what is, you know, three quarters of a cup of yogurt, um, put the rest away, you know, go sit down. And if possible, try to take those five minutes or 10 minutes out of your day to just pay attention to your eating, put away the distractions. That can also really, really help with the portion sizes that we're eating. You know, I, sorry, I, that really, it's really funny how just in nutrition and anything in life, how you're in some aspects, you're doing something really well and you just never bring that over to this other side. So what I really heard there was portion control. And it, so steak, you know, I used to just buy those big steaks at Costco and throw them on the barbecue and I cut one and a half for the kids and one and a half for the, my wife and then I'd eat the big one for myself and maybe the other half that was left over. And that just, because it was sitting in front of me and I, I started, we started slicing the steak into pieces mm -hmm. and we'd serve it like that. And you know what? I never missed it. It, it just, I didn't even, I didn't even, it didn't even, it, it's like, whatever. It, it, it just never had any impact. And I'm eating far less. I'm eating better servings. And so when you just said now, maybe portion out your yogurt instead of eating it out of the tub, I was like, oh, I was kind of treating the tub as a portion. There, <laughs> there's my mistake. I got, that's very convenient. That blows convenient. my mind. You know what? I, that's so, I, I always get the bag. Like I get the bag of nuts and bolts and I'll bring them and sit down with them or I'll grab the tub of yogurt. I'll bring it and sit down. <laughs> You're all witnessing me having an epiphany right now. That's awesome. It's, it's what the show's <laughs> about. It's what it's oh. about, Toby. Uh, That's so okay, silly. There okay. Were, <laughs> there were a couple of uh, things that Toby um, mentioned, if I can interrupt mm -hmm. your session for a bit, that I wanted to drill down on. One was uh, not drinking so much, and the other was mm -hmm. a focus on uh, vegetarian meals. Um, I want to share a vegetarian recipe that I learned from the Netflix show, Live to 100, all about the blue zones. Mm -hmm. So in it, they mm. talked about um, this three sisters uh, foods that people in Costa Rica eat, and it's corn, beans, and squash, and they mix them together. And when these three things are in a stew, they make enzymes that act as if I had a steak. And once I saw this, mm. I found some three sisters recipes and Oh my God, with fire roasted tomatoes and a little bit of heat in there, it is the greatest thing. And I leave it in the fridge and that's my lunches for the week. So how, what, what do you find about people with trying to do a vegetarian recipe? Because until I saw this stew, I just thought it was, oh, lentils. <laughs> hey, I like lentils. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I think I think there's some misconceptions about, you know, plant based eating and vegetarian eating. Um, I mean, that's a great example, Buzz, of like, you weren't familiar with that until you tried it and tweaked it with some 
heat and some of your own kind of ingredients in there, which you can always do. Um, but yeah, I think it's just kind of thinking outside the box. It doesn't have to be like dry lentils and brown rice. Uh, you can get creative. And um, I think what they were probably referring to is that combining different sources of protein and different foods mm -hmm. is always great because those proteins can kind of be fairly similar to what you would get with something like a steak. Um, and mm -hmm. there, the other thing I do talk about with clients about trying to eat more plant-based is it doesn't have to be all or nothing, right? So you did have mm -hmm. a nice example there of like an actual vegetarian dish, but you know, if you're used to making your chili with ground beef, you can also do like half beef and then throw in half like black beans or something yummy like that. So it doesn't have to be, you know, mm -hmm. hundred and or all one way or the other. What's your favorite uh, veg recipe, mm -hmm. Toby? You know, I, I got stuck on this. Um, I, like I'm a big YouTube fan and uh, the, yeah, yeah. anything you want to learn how to do is on, is on YouTube. Um, and so there's a couple of people that I follow. There's a uh, food wishes and there's, Oh, I wish I could remember her name right now. She's a, um, she's an Indian, uh, chef. She's wonderful. She's just has these wonderful and, uh, chickpeas. Oh, I'm into chickpeas and I love spice. And, um, and so that, that's a dish that we make a lot. We will, you know, maybe even just do like, I'll make a tomato biscuit home or, and then have some grilled cheese with it or something like that. And what I love is including my kids. It, it's funny for all the failures that we're dealing with now as adults, you know, cause we were raised in this world of like, are you full? Eat more, eat more. You got to eat more until you're like so full. And, you know, I'm kind of the lost cause. I will, maybe not, but I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm so, my, my journey now is really with my kids and teaching them a love for food and how to cook and not, are you full? It's, have you had enough? And that's really important. You don't have to be full and they get to enjoy things like chickpeas and black beans you were mentioning and all these different varieties. And, you know, there's that moment as an aside, when you wonder as a parent, like, am I being, am I a good parent? Like, am I really, these kids are, and I remember the first time my daughter asked for more asparagus. And I remember thinking like, well, maybe I'm doing okay. Yeah, no kidding. Maybe I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to keep Hey, you got them on Brussels sprouts, later. man. You're doing fine. Oh, Brussels sprouts are so good. But um, I'm trying to bring more veggies, uh, green. I don't know why I keep getting stuck on green ones, but I love roasting them in the oven and bringing them out. Um, and just trying to add more to the plate and keeping that protein there. You know, we, we almost always have, have a protein during fish, beef, chicken, pork. Um, but you know, it, it, it's become so much smaller. It, it's, you don't, you don't need this huge piece of meat sitting there. Yeah, exactly. I think that's such a great illustration, Toby, that it, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You don't have to cut the meat out or mm -hmm. you know do away with it entirely. It's more about like mm -hmm. bringing more of the veggies in. And if you do that naturally or, or like explore some great like ancient grains and things like that, naturally, mm -hmm. if you do that, you're going to find that you're going to be eating a little bit less of the meat anyhow, because you're filling up on mm -hmm. some of these foods. So. Yeah. So is this how a session goes? Is is you you have a plan and then it just gets sidetracked with everybody sharing recipes? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe not a typical a typical one, but uh, but you know the idea is really that we're going to like kind of identify what you, goals you're working on and um, and it doesn't have to be a specific concern you have. That's another misconception mm -hmm. about seeing a dietitian. Is it may just be, hey, I'm not sure if my diet is kind of where it should be. Like, can we chat about it? There's always something we can talk about that might help to improve it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we just really, my job is like to walk alongside you. It's really not to tell you all the things you're doing wrong or, you know, food shame you. It's really kind of exploring things with you. And often mm -hmm. clients have those aha moments, you know, maybe as Toby did of like, oh yeah, I never thought of that because I've never taken the time to actually think about these things, you know? So, yeah. And that, I think that's what it is. It's, it's taking the time to think about it. It's what we talk about with mental health. It's what we talk about with don't change much. And, you know, I think food is just something we kind of all take for granted, but when you talk with somebody who is an expert and who knows it, well, now all of a sudden you're, you're coming at it from a more responsible angle. I don't know. And then, and you come up with, with better ideas and on how to do things. Just talk. Yeah. 
Exactly. Talking about it and talking about it with someone who is, you know, a credible expert. I think that part is important just because, you know, there's lots of supposed experts out there on nutrition and we're kind of inundated with, I think, you know, a lot of myths and misconceptions about trendy diet, you know, fads and things like that. So, you know, dietitians, our job is to be as evidence-based and credible as possible. So, um, okay. Yeah, well, let me yeah. let me throw some some fad stuff at you. Um, is there a better diet when it comes to Atkins, Paleo, Keto, Mediterranean? Like, what what is the best? Yeah, I mean, when I hear Mediterranean, I do. You know, my heart swells a bit. It's a really, it is a good one. It's we call it a diet, but it's kind of an approach to eating. It's many different diets. You know, obviously, many different Mediterranean countries, but. I'd say that's a favorite one of mine and probably a lot of dietitians out there um, be just because it's stood the test of time and it's really simple in terms of, you know, whole foods, whole ingredients, a nice variety of foods. That's a huge part of the Mediterranean diet is that it's not isolating or taking out this whole food group, you know, lots of plants in there, fish, olive oil, nuts, seeds, lots of the great foods we've talked about already. Um, and so it's a really great place to start, I think, for a lot of folks. My wife came home with organic cream cheese this week, uh, and I just went, what? Uh, organic. Is it, is it worth the extra 10, 20? She said it was a smaller package and it was cheaper, so that's why she bought it. But I just went, really? Organic cream cheese? Um, yeah. So organic. Is that legit? Uh I mean, I guess depends who you ask, depends what your goals are. But I will say as a, you know, nutrition person, um, no, I, I don't really subscribe to it. Uh, I, yeah, I think there's much better ways we can spend our money and focus on like local. I'm a big fan of like trying to buy locally sourced foods as yes. much as possible. So I tend mm -hmm. to shift folks a little bit more to that side when it's possible. It's obviously not always possible, but uh, I think we're maybe getting a little bit past sort of the organic food trend for the most part. My favorite kind of mm -hmm. organic is the one that comes from the backyard. I call it like, you know, the 10 step diet. I'm going to go get some spinach, some carrots, some potatoes. And then mm -hmm. that, that's my organic, right? Now, do you have a garden up yeah. there on the Sunshine Coast? You you have to have a huge one, right? You know what? I, we have a half acre property and I, I have very little garden space. It's all in trees and... <laughs> But, um, oh. you know, one of the, I, I really enjoy herbs. So we have a herb garden. Yeah. We have a lot of local. And actually, funny enough, there's a wonderful group of, of um, that uh, called one the uh, One Straw Society. And, and they're, they're up on the Sunshine Coast. And they put together a food basket from all the local farmers up there. And it's like a one-stop shop. And so we just yesterday, I purchased my food basket for the summer. And every Friday, we go and pick up our fresh vegetables. And it's all locally you know, growing and produced. Um, and, and I really love it. But like, like, like you, I, I'm not a huge organic fan. When I say organic yogurt, it's simply because that's the one I like. It's just, it, it's the texture, the taste is, is uh, great. Um, you know, but you, you touched on something that I've always kind of fought with because, you know, especially on YouTube, I don't know if you're aware of this, everybody's an expert. <laughs> and I have uh, seen some great advice out we're there. We're on YouTube right now. <laughs> right, right. But, but no, no, no. But we know what we're talking about. That's oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So the, at, least, at, least one of, at least one of the three of us does, right? Which right, is yeah. kind of my, what I'm wondering about is that how do you, it's, it's hard to distinguish what's good information and what's bad information these days. And so even like, where would I go to find good information to somebody like yourself? But if I don't have the financial resources or the... Mm -hmm the wherewithal to see a nutritionalist, how do you, boy, how do we navigate all this? It seems overwhelming. Every second day, it's a new thing that we have to do. Yeah, definitely. I think with more information out there, it has just gotten more confusing for most people. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. When I Google like nutrition, something to check, you know, what, up, get up to speed with something, I often put dietitian at the end of it um, because oh. you do want to find your information from, dietitians ideally like I would say you know we do have the most training in in nutrition so always checking the sources right if it's coming yeah. from someone who's selling their very expensive you know supplement or mm -hmm. their diet book um, you just kind of want to see who who's giving the information out 
Um, and I do, mm -hmm. you know, I'm obviously biased, but I do tend to prefer mm -hmm. nutrition information that's coming from, you know, either like a reputable scientific journal or from a registered dietitian. Well, let, let me uh, toss this plug in here, guys. The Guy's Guide to Healthy Eating is coming out again. And I know, Caitlin, you're working on that with uh, Chef Ned Bell, who's going to supply some great recipes. So don't change much.ca is where the experts are, Toby. The Guy's Guide to Healthy Eating is dropping and so that's where you can get it <laughs> well laddie da did that not work out for a good segue hey i love it into one thing into appreciate another. it man <laughs> take yeah. that hand off right for a touchdown um perfect uh you know this has been a great conversation i i really appreciate your your candor toby and your expertise you know put the dietitian at the end of it caitlin it's been mm -hmm. it's been a great conversation uh podcast is don't change much so Let's talk about it. Uh, I know you've embraced that theme with the Canadian Men's Health Foundation as a champion for many years, Toby, but what what okay. motivates you to want to make simple little regular changes? Boy, you know, it'll be different for everyone, right? But um, the big one for me was kids. The big one for me was my kids. And when they start getting older and, and paying attention and all those little things that they see you doing, whether it's having that drink or having that, you know, you know whatever. They, the kids notice these things and they see, you know, my relationship with food comes from how I grew up as a child and their relationship with food. You know, we're all going to have, they're going to have their own challenges and what can I do to have the best impact on them? And that's, I mean, without a, it starts to sound corny after a while. Maybe you have to have kids to actually, you know, be able to identify that, but, or to feel that, but, um, you know, you can't just tell them what to do. You kind of got to do it. And it's kind of, it, it, it's been, um, it, it, it's been the uh, impetus for, for change really for me. And that's, that's kind of been, and it's a slow moving process. You know, I, I, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but taking time to celebrate what we're doing well and also not trying to change everything all at once. And so that little thing, like I'm going to put yogurt into a cup you know, when I sit down tonight, that life-changing stuff. Oh my yes. goodness. It's so, it's so strange. And Ned Bell, like I remember Ned, when we were doing um, the, the TELUS documentary a little while ago, and Ned was walking me around the outside of the, of, of the supermarket, showing me what to eat. And, and he introduced me to fish, you know, and, and even the questions I'm like, well, salmon, so I can have a 12 ounce piece of salmon, right? He's like, no, <laughs> no, no, you have a, have a smaller portion, but um uh, so, you know, hearing Ned and all of these little resources and Ned's recipes I've followed and following these really, um, I, I'm getting kind of sidetracked here, but uh, being inspired, that's what I'm saying, being inspired by these things that I find along the way, like this conversation and realizing that, oh, I'm not the only one. Okay. So we're all kind of a lost cause. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. that takes the pressure off. Okay, good. Caitlin, mm -hmm. how, what about you? Uh, does seeing reactions like Toby gives you motivate you? Yeah, it really does. I mean, that's my favorite part of my job, I think, is, you know, say working like with folks like Toby or just, yeah, you know, regular folks who kind of have the same struggles that we all do with having busy lifestyles, trying to eat mm -hmm. the best they can, trying to feed the, their kids the best they can, Um and just keeping it really, really practical and realistic and, you know, trying to plan ahead. I think that's probably one of my small changes that I'm trying to do a little better with is great day to day. But, you know, if you go traveling or you, you go, you know, out of mm. town, trying to just plan ahead a little bit, pack a few healthy snacks with you um, and don't get mm -hmm. sort of caught off guard. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the chat both of you i really appreciate it thank you for your expertise uh caitlin and thanks for your candor toby it was wonderful don't change much.ca get more information there hey thanks for listening and watching the don't change much podcast you can download a guy's guide to healthy eating for free it's in the episode description or you can go to menshealthfoundation.ca and if you haven't already click the follow button and join us every month for a new episode of the Don't Change Much podcast.